Hi there, Sandy Sidhu here. Welcome to another episode of The Unstoppable Entrepreneur. This week, I had the pleasure of speaking to the fabulous ladies over at Kickstart Kitchen, Jules Tiger and Christina Fight. We talked about the importance of having a solid foundation when starting your business, finding out your passionate why, and the value in having mentors as well as accountability partners. So stick around, watch the episode, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Today, I just want to go ahead and introduce yourself. So we got launched this business because we thought we've already done it. Why don't we teach other people how they can not make so many mistakes and maybe kind of avoid some of the pitfalls of starting mm -hmm. on their own? And we know that we can help them. So we launched this to help women entrepreneurs or people who had great ideas know that they could launch their businesses and know that they could start even if it was just part-time. That's, that's, that's really exciting. Um, do you want to share a little bit about how the name came about? Because I, I'm pretty sure there's an interesting story. <laughs> you share that. Well. <laughs> yeah, we, so we got together um, and we decided, okay, we're going to come up with a name today. It's got to be today. You know, we've been mulling over what we're going to name our business and we decided the best recipe for naming a business is wine. So <laughs> we went to a little restaurant nearby and um, there was a chalkboard on the wall and they had their menu written on the chalkboard. And um, so a couple of glasses of wine later, we were starting to think of the kitchen theme. And so yeah, Kickstart Kitchen was born in a restaurant um, over a couple of glasses of wine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Awesome. And I mean, I, I, I'm i a subscriber to your blog and your newsletter, and I love the theme with like the dish and, and what how it all ties in together about, you know, in the kitchen where you're putting things together and, you know, you see an outcome. So why don't we dive right in and you start telling us with us some of the tips and some of the things that you might have seen with the women entrepreneurs that you work with and where they may be struggling and, and feeling overwhelmed and how um, people who are listening today and if they're just on the fence about starting how they can kind of get on the right I think track one of the things that we both felt when starting our own businesses on our own and now we're seeing so many women are struggling with too is that you love what you do and you just jump right in you say okay I want to start a business and I'm just gonna get started and you know there's not a whole lot um, of planning that goes into it or it's the complete opposite where there's so much planning and there's not a whole lot of doing involved um, and so I think one of the things that we really try to work with women to do is to really have a solid plan before you get started, but not to let that stop you from taking action and actually doing what you want to do. So um, we recently actually had a, our 2013 planning retreat. We went to Palm Springs for a couple of days, got out of our regular routine and just kind of um, got away and did some planning for 2013. So it felt really good to just kind of decide okay now what do we want to focus on in the next year and things can change and we can you know more things or whatever you know what our goals are and, and where we want to go for the next year and now everything that we're doing is kind of tailored to that so everything yeah. that we're working on is okay does that align with our goals and so that's one of the things we try to help mm -hmm. women do is really get clear on what they want before they start but then to get started yeah and I think one of the things that was great for us is we knew we had a ton of things that we wanted to do, but when you're planning, you got to pick a few, pick a, pick a few and focus on those. And you know, that's one of the things I think you miss in the beginning is you don't just, you have your list, but you don't pick the core things. Um, Great shiny objects. Oh yeah. That's, that's really <laughs> difficult as a new entrepreneur, especially once you start getting online. Yeah. I, yes. Oh, I think the other big yeah. thing for us and for people starting out is as fast as you can, get a mentor, get a, an accountability partner um, or a small group of accountability partners. I think there's great pay options and those add a lot of people have skin in the game. They really take it seriously and I think you get a little more out of it. But there is a fr free options out there through networking groups or find a business buddy. It's so critical to have somebody that you can bounce ideas off of that's maybe not your client so you can feel like you can let your guard down a little bit. And so you can bounce ideas right. or when you've got um, a challenge, you can get brainstorming sessions going or you say, well, I really need some focus. Tell me I've got these 10 things. What do you think I should focus on? Or, or here's where I'm at. What do you think would be the best route just to get somebody else's perspective? So having a mentor who's either already done some of the things you're doing 
is experiencing some of the things you're doing and have an accountability partner or a group of people mm -hmm. that you can bounce those ideas with and hold your feet to the fire when you say you're going to do something <laughs> so that you have, you know, oh my gosh, I haven't spent all week on doing this and now it's coming and I'm having my accountability call on Friday. I got to get my crap together and do this. Uh, it really makes a difference and you just don't feel like you're alone. Two, one of the things we see mm -hmm. women do a lot and it's so tempting to do is make that mentor your best friend. Like that person, you're like, oh, I'm just going to call my best friend and they're going to be my mentor. Or, you know, someone you've worked with in the past that isn't necessarily a mentor to you. They maybe not haven't done it yet, but they like you and, you know, they're, they appreciate what you're doing. They're excited for you. So they're the person that is going to hold you accountable. And that doesn't work a lot of the time. Yeah. So I think if it's, if it's someone that's not necessarily already in your like inner circle, um, that makes you feel a little bit more accountable and you bring a little bit more to the table. I think when it's someone that you really are trying to say, okay, they're going to hold me accountable and I need to do this. And they're going to tell it to you straight. Your friend wants to maybe protect you. Somebody mm -hmm. who knows who doesn't want to hurt your feelings. And in business, when you've got an idea and you're so centered in it, you need somebody to tell it to you straight when you come to them with a challenge or an idea. Right. You, you need to have your feelings hurt a little bit. You know, you need to get, you need to kind of get that. <laughs> a little bit. Just say, what are you thinking? <laughs> exactly. But I mean, so far you've shared so many juicy, um, like so much juicy advice and, and details. And I think going back to your first point about really laying that solid foundation. And I know in your ebook, you also talk about, you know, figuring out your path, why, why you're doing this. And then the other extreme, like where you're not over planning and you're kind of stuck in that analysis paralysis where you're just kind of like, okay, I'm going to plan all of 2013, but when it comes to actually doing, then you're just overwhelmed. How do you find that, that balance between, I know, I think Christina, you mentioned, you know, picking those top three, like how do you, for those people who are kind of like, I don't, I want to plan everything or now what do I do? What, yeah, I what think do you looking at a couple of different things, uh, Chris Gillibo has a great rating system about how he does it in his book, hundred dollar startup. Uh, but I think you can do it simply on your own if you didn't pick up the book. And it's really about looking at what gives you the best return. So what's going to make you money? Cause you're in business to make money. Bottom line, mm -hmm. you, you want to love what you do, but you mm -hmm. also want to get paid for loving what you do and participating in it. Cause you know, you're going to give it all you've got and put in a lot of work. So, Find out and look at the list uh, of stuff you want to do, goals. There's a difference between to-dos and goals. So look at your goals and say, mm -hmm. okay, what's going to make me the most money? And then rate them on what's going to have the least amount of resources, financially, time, uh, maybe different services you might need. What's going to be the most effective use of my resources to get to that? And I think you'll have some stuff that rises to the top on maybe these are my four or three things. Uh, it's it's real easy to to have a lot of to do's and think of those as goals because they're easy to check off and that feels real when you check things off the mm -hmm. list. But it's I think just a it, recipe for yeah, spinning your wheel. It is, yeah, you realize, gosh, but on my oh, to do's, I'm not really necessarily making any money on those. Mm -hmm. They're not. Maybe it's a least amount of resources, but it doesn't give me a great return on my fi financial gains for my company. So always looking at, well, what's this going to make me money wise for the resource I'm putting into it. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That makes absolute sense. I mean, once you have those high level goals, you can have to do's that help you work towards those. But your high level goal, um, you know, getting hundreds and thousands of Twitter followers, is that necessarily going to translate into making money or is it just like a feel? Yeah, good right. That stat, might be an you know? action item in a, a milestone of a certain goal of reach that is part of a larger goal that says, well, I want to make my first $5,000. Mm -hmm. So you have goal mm -hmm. and then you have your milestones of what kinds of reach do I need to have? What kind of um, support tools do I need to have in place? And so those are milestone things. And then you have your action items and gaining thousands of Twitter followers right. items out of that. And I think you need different people right. at different stages in the goal. So the big goal setting, um, you know, you either need a mentor or you need somebody that can kind of, you can talk through, okay, what do you, what do you want to do with your time here? And what do you want to do yes. with your, your resources and your expertise? And then when you get to the stage of taking, you know, the milestones, that's where an accountability partner really comes in handy. You can say, okay, you said you were going to do this. Are you doing it or not? Or you can say, Hey, I've got a problem. You know, I'm running into a challenge and I don't know what the next step is. I want to reach this milestone, but I need your help. That an accountability partner is awesome for that. Yeah. And then I think, you know, 
finding people that you can really collaborate with. Um, other entrepreneurs, people in your industry, other bloggers, you know, maybe people that do exactly what you do, but they have a different audience. Um, those collaboration partners are key when it comes to like the everyday like strategy stuff, getting 10,000 Twitter followers, <laughs> whatever. Uh, when you can add value to somebody else's business and they can add value to yours, that is, I mean, you, that's unstoppable. Yes. It's unstoppable. Definitely. And um, I mean, I'm totally on board with the accountability partner. I mean, I, I've had one this year and it makes all the difference because, you know, you always pull that call every week, two weeks, you have to get things done. It's not just going to be like, hey, yeah, the weather's <laughs> nice. So I went to work out yesterday. But, you know, you're having a real serious conversation. But, you know, I talk to a lot of people about this because I mention it, you know, when I, in other interviews or when I'm talking to other uh, business uh, people and some of them just kind of don't know where to find an accountability partner or even like a mastermind would you have some resources that you could suggest to people who are just kind of scratching their heads right now going this sounds great where do I Absolutely, sign up? Yeah I think uh, like Jules said at different times in your business there'll be different types of groups of mentorship of masterminds of accountability partners that you might need so um, you know we participated and we mastermind and you participated in that that's a great um, group to get a good feel for that. So you're taking steps in your business, you're getting some mentorship and you're doing accountability. Mm -hmm. I think it just depends on where you're at in your business. Sometimes all you need is, again, that high level mentorship to get you to your big goal and some accountability partner, but you may not need a lot of, or even be ready for a lot of the nitty gritty business type pieces. Maybe you don't need to yet know about how to launch a newsletter, but you've got to get, you've got to have a place to get started. So there's different groups out there that if you search under mentorship, we've got a program mm -hmm. coming up called Catalyst that is going to offer mm -hmm. those three core components, getting the high level planning, breaking it down into milestones and accountability uh, and, and action items, setting you up with accountability partners, and then helping you connect with collaboration opportunities, um, helping you know what to look for, how to open the door to those so that you can kind of grow your business with other people. So our program is going to focus on those things, and I think there'll be a very specific set of people who need that. They need that specific piece at that time in their business, mm -hmm. um, where there's an Allie Brown program for $10,000 maybe that maybe that's when you're already making fifty, a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year, and, and then you need to take it to the next level. You're mm -hmm. way beyond the startup stage. So I think you kind of have exactly. to keep looking for where's the next thing that's going to make me stretch in programs and, and accountability partners? I think in looking for mentors and accountability partners, just personally for us, we have looked to, you know, you, you're like, okay, I'm going to find a mentor <laughs> or whatever. And um, I think what you find is a lot of people who are really doing it well, but they may be like 15 or 20 steps beyond where you're at right now. And I think there's a lot of value in finding someone who's maybe like five steps or 10 steps, you know, beyond where yes. you are right now. Not someone who's internationally known. Th those people are excellent at what they do, absolutely. But when you find someone who's a little bit closer to where you are, they remember what it feels like to have a tribe of 300 people versus a tribe of 30,000 people. Right. And they know, they remember what it took to get to 500. You know, they're not, they may not worry about, you know, you're not worried about making hundreds of thousand dollars. You're worried about making your first five or ten thousand dollars, and I think um, finding someone that is closer to where you are can be super beneficial. It can be more affordable, um, and it can be someone that you can eventually collaborate with and who can learn a lot from you. So there's a lot of crossover there. Yeah, I think the the money that you're gonna spend, you'll see, the higher you go in your business, the more money you'll spend on getting that person that's the next step. And I, I love this phrase, like take them to the next step, then they'll see farther. You just need to take it in bites. Mm -hmm. I, I think if you try to jump too far too fast, you end up in a land where you don't even understand the language and you're trying to figure out how to get the minutiae stuff done, how to get the base done when you're trying to, you know, stack the top card and you only have two cards on your base. So it is, it is right. taking that in stages, knowing what to look for just a little bit farther to stretch you so that it's achievable. You don't want to fail the first time or second time out just because you overstretched on thinking, oh my gosh, I should be at this high level right away. Sometimes setting the expectation too high for yourself, you're just setting yourself up for failure, where it's great to stretch. Right. And, and I think that a lot of people, it, it is overwhelming when they start, because when you do start looking around online and poking around on people's websites, 
you know, you see these successful people and you're just like, oh my God, how did they do that? Or you don't realize that, you know, someone like Allie Brown, she's been, she's been at it for probably more than 10 years, right? Now she's at this, this level, but a lot of people just kind of get frustrated because they're just like, hey, I'm doing all this thing. I started a blog. I have a newsletter, but it's been like, right. (laughs) It's like, right. That there's a fake. Why doesn't my video look like Allie Brown? (laughs) the same time like I tell people that I work with it's that it's okay you know you're gonna start here you have to just start somewhere you have to put yourself out there do your first video in HD production or the first day but until you start do one video do the second video or you know put your first tweet out there or write your first ebook like I think two people get stuck in that it needs to be perfect or I'm gonna just analyze it to death and then and then nothing ends up happening and I think too when you get when you do start doing one little thing at a time, one little thing at a time, you build momentum. And you can either get to a point where you're kind of overwhelmed by it because things are happening all over the place and you're not, you're not able to get your hands around it and say, oh my gosh, I know what's going on here. But that's again where the planning comes in. If you have a plan and you've got the momentum, you know what this next step is. You know, okay, next in my, you know, next thing I'm doing is this. And you can kind of make sure that all of your momentum is built around that one thing. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, I think the the program that you're launching really sounds excellent to help people kind of maybe block out some of that noise and go, hey, you know what, I'm here phase one, month one, this is what I should focus on. Maybe, you know, doing the videos, the newsletter that's going to come out like in the nitty gritty phase two part of my business. So I think that definitely sounds um, really useful and exciting for people who are going to be uh, starting out. Where can we find out more information about this program? Is it yeah. Coming out soon. It's or... coming soon. Um, for now, you can, if you would like to be kind of on the first list to find out more about it, go to kickstartkitchen.com slash catalyst, and you can sign up for our emails okay. there, and that'll get you on kind of the fast track to be the first one to know about it as soon as it launches. Right. Awesome. Well, I'll be sure to share that in the notes as well. Um, is there any other last tips you want to share before... We um, finish off. The one thing we just try to focus on and has been really beneficial for us is to take one action every day. We call it just one thing. Just do one thing every day. And um, I think if you can do that, you're going to go big, big things are going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Awesome. So we can find you guys on at Kickstart Kitchen, online, yes. YouTube. Yes, everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All your local social media. <laughs> Okay, so I'll be sure to share that. Well, thank you so much for uh, taking out the time to uh, you know share these excellent tips with us, and I wish you all the best with your upcoming program, which I think is going to be really fabulous for women who are just starting out, kind of confused about what to do next or where to take their so, uh, I'll be sure to uh, share that with my network thank as you, well. Thank you, Sandy. We were honored to be with you. All right. Thank you.